welcome to The Lost Media Chronicles, a show which discusses various lost movies, music, art, and in this month's case, video games! <sighs> yeah, I know I'm a little late on this one, guys, but at least I got around to it eventually, right? We've done Nintendo games, first-person shooters, adventure games, and pornographic games. Today I'll finally do a frequently requested topic, internet games. Ever since I did Video Game Month last year, I was thumbing over the idea of covering them. However, I was hesitant for a few reasons. First off, internet games don't have a whole lot of information to warrant an entire episode. Secondly, these games aren't really considered important or significant compared to other games. Well, today we have a topic that might challenge those two points. This is the story of 3D Groove Games. Our story begins in 1995. A game designer at Design Fusion Games named James Erbach helped design a series of virtual pool simulators, fittingly enough titled Virtual Pool. The game sold well and got a Windows port. Unsatisfied with his position, Erbach decided to start his own company. In 1998, he teamed up with entrepreneur Chris Kantrowitz and programmer Peter Laufenberg to form the 3D Groove Alliance. Laufenberg developed the C++ web browser plugin that utilized 3D graphics through a Shockwave player. Together, the team developed an engine to create games that companies could use to advertise products, cartoons, and movies. This idea of providing marketers with a new means of advertisement was ingenious, and few companies implemented it as well as they did. The company used a converted version of the virtual pool games on a site to display the power of the engine, and reportedly it got 5 to 6 million plays. The company's first big project was Skydive, published by Electronic Arts in 1999 through their Gonzo Games label. While the game got negative reviews, it caught the attention of other companies that wanted to utilize the engine. As time continued, more and more companies latched onto the engine and became clients. Things were looking great as 3D Groove grew into the mid-2000s. However, as the market changed, 3D Groove games started to struggle. As the late 2000s came in, iOS and mobile gaming platforms were becoming the norm for advertisement games. Even with 3D Groove pushing their own limits with the 2007 Transformers Battle Universe game, which used the Tiger NetJet controller, they had difficulty keeping their lights on. Less fish were biting and clients weren't staying on board. The details of 3D Groove's demise are still not entirely known. Some say it was the progression of technology, others say that there was executive meddling involved. In early 2009, the site was shut down, causing many of its games to become lost. 3D Groove Alliance rebranded under the name Otoy, which still exists. The the company no longer acknowledges 3D Groove or its games. Which leads to a common question that even I had to ask, so what? The story behind the company isn't all that particular, yet this is one of the most popular pages on the wiki. Well, if you look at the long list of games that 3D Groove developed, you'd understand the reasoning. 3D Groove made games for Pringles, Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon, Disney, Mazda, the list goes on. With such a huge library, the answer becomes clear. This is a nostalgia-driven media search. People want to play the games that they played as children. Now, it needs to be noted that these games weren't famous for their quality. Some of them were utterly broken or nigh unplayable. However, not everybody owned a PlayStation or a Nintendo GameCube back in the day, but they had internet access. This made these games some of the only ways they could play video games involving their favorite characters. Yeah, they weren't always the best, but they were fun and entertaining just enough to bring fans back. Now, a good chunk of these games were rescued by fans that downloaded them back in the day. For some games, it wasn't that difficult to get the site's source code and download the full game onto your computer. Hell, some sites encouraged this downloading. For others, it was a little difficult, but people were able to snake their way around the code in rippets. In some cases, the games could be purchased and played offline. The rescued ones ended up being hosted on archive.org and other servers. Best of all, they faced little detriment from rights holders, as these games are considered monetarily worthless. With so many of these games being lost and found, this could turn into a cataloging nightmare. Almost all of the Nickelodeon games have predictably survived. Seeing 
seeing as they are a behemoth of nostalgia. The only Nickelodeon game that seems to be missing is a Jimmy Neutron game. Other games missing include 3D Groove's original titles, the lesser popular product-based games like Skittles and AT&T, and original games that were made for other websites that used the 3D Groove engine. Of the big nostalgic companies that produce 3D Groove games, Disney remains the most heavily affected, with only a handful of games still surviving. But it goes to show how well remembered these games are. For every drooling, obsessive, rabid fan hell-bent on getting something found, there's dozens of well-intentioned people that stick to the same methods of media searching. No fanbase should be judged by its worst members. The games may not be classics, but nostalgia is a hell of a drug. And until all of these games are uncovered, you can bet people will continue to search for them. Well, that about does it for Video Game Month 2017. I know this last episode was a little late, but hey, it's over now and we can move on to different forms of media. Join us next time when we talk about Doctor Who. Which itself has a pretty rabid fan base. Which means any single little detail that I get wrong is going to lead to a downvote in some guy calling me a moron. See you later.